Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of our show, How I Got Here, where I talk to my doctor friends about how they got into medicine, what medicine means to them and where they're headed next. Today I have a special guest with me, research professor himself, Sonu. How are you doing, brother? Hey, what's up, man? How you, man? All right, I'm good. All right, so today we have a lot of things to talk about. One of the reasons why I wanted you here particularly was, you know, you've helped personally, you've helped me a lot with... Um, uh, research ideas and really how to navigate the usually confusing world of research because it's a very important thing for you know all the way from medical school into residency and yeah. even beyond on your on your profile and all of that but before we get into that right i want to know a little bit about you you know how you, know, you got into I, medicine i hope i haven't confused you with the research <laughs> no you haven't no confused doubt. me no doubt right so I'm, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about yourself you know how you got into medicine what the journey has been so far for you and you know where you're headed next i'm sure there's yeah you know, yeah a million and one things in your head that you're planning to about let's, let's just like start uh, my personal statement right. so where are you from you know so all right so i, I guess i'll start start from the beginning right so yeah, right. um I, I'm Indian. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but uh, so after my parents left India, I was actually born in the Netherlands in Leiden, like Factor Five Leiden. There's Interesting. A, the actual, same city. The same city. Oh yeah. my god! So, what goes into that? <laughs> ho hopefully, I don't have fact. My parents moved there when I was like two years old. So okay. I, I pretty much uh, I grew up in the states. Uh, I grew up out right close by in, in Long Island. Okay. Um, and you know I. Medicine is, I guess, uh, being from an Indian family is something that my family always wanted me to do, but they, they never they never forced me to do it. It was kind of like, do whatever you want, but do it well, right? Um, on the back somewhere, yeah, please be a doctor. Yeah. I mean, for, for most of us, and we talk about yeah. this a lot in most of the, the episodes, because I've had guys from all over the place, actually, yeah. and sometimes it's, you know, there's an influence from the parents, sometimes yeah. not. But however the case may be, it's 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 a good thing where we're from. It's 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 you know, good. And it's specific is a really good thing to end up as a doctor. Yeah, and I, I think. yeah, and I, I think as for a lot of people in our mm. program or, or residents in general, yeah, like yeah. If, especially if you're come you're not from the states, uh, I, I feel like being a doctor is still part of our culture, is the prestige and stuff that comes with it. But you know, I was fortunate where it was kind of like. If you want to do something, do it well, but yeah. that means, you know, be a doctor. <laughs> no, but, but no, so I was I was lucky, you know, it's something that I've always wanted to do. And, and I, I can point it back to my high school bio teacher. I know it sounds cliche, but, yeah. you know, he was, he he really pushed me in the direction of medicine. So Okay, yeah, so. all right, all right. So I, high school, was that really the first time you ever thought about medicine or even before then? Yeah, I mean, and that's probably the first time because my, you know, my mom, she's a business owner and, and my, my dad's a PhD, so, you know, other side of science. And, okay. and so I kind of grew, I grew up around basic sciences and chemistry more so than the medicine. The medicine, okay. Um, so, I mean, I would say, yeah, high school was probably the first time where... Where you thought yeah. about it. Okay, Um. so moving forward now, you, so, just, you had, you had, you know... It thought to want to pursue medicine as a career yeah. you finished high school you went to undergrad did you you know did you still did you maintain that even up until then yeah so so I, I actually went to I actually went to undergrad and at Stony Brook right here on Long Island as well all right uh, and then after that there was med school so I, I, I didn't change what I wanted to do and, okay you know I kind of just reinforced it okay um, but I, I did take an interesting route I, I went to med school in Europe in Poland interesting okay. um, and it was either Caribbean or Poland and and you know somehow you know fate took me to, to Poland which Poland. which I would do it again in a All second right. I, I think this is a good this is a good mm -hmm. this is a good chunk of guys who go from here to Poland to, to study medicine and then come back I yeah, think. It's, yeah it's it's actually there is about I believe there's eight schools now in Poland that have US US students Oh, interesting. I believe there's eight. And are, are, they, are they English based um, programs? Or? Yeah, so every everything we learned was in English. Okay. Uh, so all the all the classes were in English and they're pretty big programs, okay. uh, 100, 100 students okay. uh, in some of them. My 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 class was about 55. Okay. So I mean decent size, but my school was right in the middle. There was other schools that had bigger classes, some smaller, but everything was in English. Moving forward, yeah. you know, ending up in Poland, in Europe, to to study medicine, what was the experience like over so, there in Poland? So I I, I would just, I guess to compare it to here, from from what I've heard from my friends, yeah. uh, 
I, I feel like it was more like old school traditional uh, teaching. Uh, it was a lot more hands on from what I've from what I've heard from my friends. Like okay. we we got to we got to do a lot of surgeries. Sometimes we were doing the surgeries on rotations, and the professors were first assist. Um, wow, we, that's that's remarkable. Yeah, I don't so, think that that doesn't happen here. Obviously. Yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, it was it was like a very good learning experience. You wanted to do something, you can do it. Uh, yeah. We had hard we had hard calls. We sometimes did thirty six hours calls when we were in emergency medicine or as students. As students, yeah. Wow. Um, and you know, we when when we were doing internal medicine, we would stay we would stay with our, our professors just to get a feel for it. And and not only on top of that, when it came to examinations. Uh, I guess it's like old traditional, like we, we had like written exams that were like all U assembly board type of questions, but then we had oral exams. Yeah. Uh, so where we, you know, had to go into a professor's office and and they would just ask him a random question depending on the topic. And then so you have to voice you have it. To, you have to voice it. And, <laughs> and usually it was in front of your colleagues, right? So there was, oh there was a lot of pressure. But, but overall the experience was amazing. Um, I would do it again. All right. Um, you know, but that that I guess that leads into how I got into research. Yeah, right? but, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, we're going to talk a lot about yeah. that, right? So, because one of the reasons why I I, yeah. I enjoy doing this is to also identify certain points through your journey that you'd say you learned this particular life skill from, or how to. Because you know, get into medicine, it's challenging yeah, right? yeah of it's, course. even if you're going to poland it doesn't come easy like that yeah. right so many factors before you actually get there yeah. so from all of that you know process for you what, what were some of the things you, you learned you learned along the way uh, and you know we're still talking about how you ended up back in the u.s residency right yeah so i mean one one you know one thing my my dad told me when when you know when i was younger he's and, and you know it still sticks to me till this day is yeah. is like hard work never goes unnoticed okay so it depend it depends on when it gets noticed but if you keep working hard and and just staying true to yourself and, and what you want to do i i feel eventually someone notices and, and and that's kind of what i've kept in the back of my mind oh, wow. so i mean it was tough it was tough to be in a foreign country and yep. and go to med school and thinking about the prospects of coming back how will i get residency and all those things uh mm -hmm. it was tough but you know that's 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 one thing I, I even when I you're far away from home studying yeah. for exams sometimes yeah. you're like why well, I'm doing this and yeah. what's the future but you know I, I figured if I kept working hard at least I'll get to you get to somewhere get yeah. somewhere and I, well yeah. you know that's that's a recurring theme usually yeah. for many of our conversations where in medicine it's a lot more about the grind it's a lot more about the you know the sweat is you know, in comparison yeah. to being smart, which everybody is. Everybody yeah. in medicine, if you pass a USMLE, listen, you're yeah. smart. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. are smart. There's no, there's yeah. no doubt about that, That's, right? It's, it's, true. A, it's a lot about the uh, hard work, I'd say. Yeah, I, I think, honestly, I, I think if you've gotten into medicine and you've gotten certain distance, every, everyone's smart. You don't, you don't, you know, it's, it's the other factors that push you, push you to the next step. Right, and yeah. that that I think lands us yeah. particularly yeah. to what I was hoping that we'll talk about today, which yeah. is research for you. Um, it takes extra work, right? You can it's, imagine, right? It takes yeah. extra work for you to, you know, do all the studying required to yeah. pass the exams. At this point, do all of your clinical training, even as a student and as a resident, yeah. and then still have time on top of that to do research that, that takes that takes extra you know yeah and 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 i you're, you're absolutely right it's it's extra it's it's different it, it's different than becoming a phd because research is part of your training yeah it's it's leading to your goal and and in medicine regardless of where you are in your medical career as a medical student or if you're a resident or even attendings it doing research requires extra effort yeah and it's tough it's tough in medicine because we're so stretched thin to begin with, and and you know I, I think I think there's there's an inner desire that you need to have even a little bit just to accomplish some things in research, which I I'm sure we'll talk about. No, no doubt. So we, we, we went off from you know talking about the fact that it's it's a lot about hard work, right? And that kind of led us into talking about research, which we understand like I, we just went over the fact that it takes a little bit of extra yeah. strength, but 
it's not just about the strength. I mean, it's not about the work too. You have to know what you're doing as well. Yeah. You have to know what counts. You know, if you're going to invest your time into research, it has to be meaningful. It has yeah. to be something that you eventually be able to look back on and say, okay, it worked out. You know, I was able to get somewhere. And it also adds to your yeah. career, career things moving forward, right? Yeah. So how, what's your first you know, for somebody who hasn't engaged in any sort of research, what's the first thing that you should start thinking about? Um, so I, I guess I'll talk a little bit about how, how I got into it, right? Okay, so, exactly. Let's, so, let's talk about that. So like, even though even though my, my father's a PhD, I grew up around research and labs and stuff, I, yeah. I was never particularly into it. Okay. Like I, I, I like going to the labs, freezing things in liquid nitrogen, shattering yeah. them. It was fun as a kid, <laughs> wow, right? Okay. Uh, but like to actually do research, I wasn't in, in I didn't do much in, in undergrad either uh, or in med school. But but, you know, I re I found myself at the doorstep of research when when I came back home and okay. and I, you know, I, I took all my board exams and I was being a foreign medical graduate applying for residency. And, and you know, it doesn't always go the way you want the first no time. Doubt. So no doubt. Um, so I'm like, OK, I, I need to do something. I looked at my CV. And, you know, I went online just like a lot of people and I'm like, what am I going to do? And, and I'm someone who, who, have, who hasn't done much research before. Uh, so I'm like, I, I need to get some research. Okay. And, and luckily I, I was able, you know, be, luckily I, I, growing up on Long Island, I was able to, you know, I have a good amount of hospitals around me. And, okay. and so I, I randomly just emailed people. I, you know, I, the, but like you said, what's the first step? And, and I guess the first step was figuring out what I, figuring out what I'm interested in. Okay. Um, and and I knew I wanted to, you know, I'm interested in cardiology, pulmonology. So, basically, I I went to every hospital's website, found people doing clinical research, and sent them an email. Wow, that yeah, takes, yeah. that takes God <laughs> still. And you know that that I mean honestly that might sound like something that you would hear from people not from the states. They're trying to get some sort of research opportunities here, yeah. but I'm, I'm from here and, and yeah. you know, I, I, I did the same thing. Okay. Um, and so I finally got in touch with someone out on Long Island and it happened to be in pulmonary. Okay. And, you know, I, I had done no clinical research before. Okay. And I mean, regardless of what we did in college, just to yeah. satisfy research requirement, but, yeah. um, and I, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. And so clinical research is a whole different ball game because mm -hmm. it, it means everything from writing a little case report which yeah. a lot of us must must be familiar with yeah. or know what it is at least to these huge huge clinical trials yeah. uh, um, but I didn't know anything so when I started at this uh, this hospital basically my my job was I was in charge of a database okay so that's that's how I that's how I feel like a lot of people start in research they, they get in touch with someone and and they're in charge of some data. Just so collect the data and collect know, the data and just it was just processing like, a little bit, or it was just yeah. Maybe. So it was it was going through charts, collecting data, uh, basically basically like echocardi echocardiograms uh, yeah. um, as well as catheterizations, mm -hmm. lab work, and just like tallying everything. So I okay. and you know so I didn't have much experience with that, but. But uh, I mean, that's, that's how I started. And I feel like that's how most people start. They get some sort of position where they're supposed to mine data. Yeah, I think I, I did something similar. Yeah, yeah. I mean, much, much, you know, smaller scale though, but yeah. it's the same thing. You go to patients, talk to them, get some information and you just pull the data together for the larger, yeah. larger study, yeah. I guess. Um, right? Yeah, and, and you know, um, at that point I was just collecting data and then the person who I was working for um, was like, oh, I want to write an article. Okay. <laughs> so the the extent of my writing abilities came from college, right? Like writing 101 and, yeah. and writing a paper. And, yeah. and, and basically I was handed a bunch of journal articles and told like we need to write a review article. All right, that's tough um, to do. And, and off the bat, when you haven't done anything, I, I just didn't know where to start. So I, I kind of just... I kind of went online. I didn't even know what PubMed was at that time. <laughs> and I kind of was directed to PubMed and I kind of just read other review articles and I, okay. I kind of put something together, you know, just kind of what I knew from undergrad and, and writing and, and I showed it to the doctor I was working for. And, yeah. and it was a bunch of, he took his pen, yeah. right? And 
It was like, not, 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 not. <laughs> everything was crossed out. So, you know, so that, that was my first, uh, I guess, soiree with yeah. research and, and, you know, but, but I would, I would say like, you know, that's, that kind of triggered me to like, I want to learn how to do this. Okay. So you, you, you were at that point, your first, yeah. your first research endeavor was mostly crushed out. Right? Yeah, exactly. And so then you had to go back to the drawing board to figure out what exactly am I doing here? And, you know, exactly. And, and how you know, do I process this? And, and yeah. the, the, he, he was an attending, attending pulmonologist and, uh, you know, he actually sat down with me and showed me like, this is how it's done. I, I don't think writing or doing research or writing a review article or case report is something that you can just do without direction. It's okay. it's easy to tell someone to do it, or or it's easy for someone to say write an abstract or case report. Um, but the first time you do it, you need direction, just like the first time you tie your shoe. I, I don't I don't think it's something that can just Comes happen. Comes naturally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So just as just as residents, when we write an H and P or we write mm -hmm. a note, mm -hmm. we need guidance. Yeah, and, no um, But I more so than that and. You know, I, I feel like over time, and that's what it was. Like when I wrote the review article, I was yeah. kind of, like kind of someone held my hand for yeah. my first one. Yeah. Uh, and that that was back in 2013. You know, so. And fast forward <laughs> nine nine. I mean. Nine nine I was trying to say 2019, but fast forward about six, six years, years later, yeah. you're well published. Your you written textbooks. Let me just put it out there. You yeah, read so, chapters of textbooks and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, it's it's a really good experience, and you know, and I've 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 been fortunate enough. I've written in textbooks. I've I've written book chapters, and uh, I'm on PubMed. I, I don't know how many times now, and I'm not saying that in a facetious way. It's just that it's just fortunate for yeah, me. Yeah, it, it paid off. You know, yeah. it worked out eventually, right? So now, uh, th th that's a lot of things, yeah. right? Going from not knowing nothing about research to being well published, yeah. right? So we find medical students, for some of the guys yeah. that are watching, medical students, you know, residents themselves, yeah. What are some of the easier ways that they can think about research in their own capacity? Something that's not too extensive, somewhere they can start at least. Yeah, so for, first of all, re research is, I, I think if you're in medicine now, yeah. um, regardless of what level, whether you're trying to get into medical school, trying to get into residency, uh, trying to get into fellowship, or as an attending, uh, you need to do research at some level. It's, no it's not... Whether you like it or not, it, it is something that kind of is 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 something that's mandatory. Yeah. Um, so so the toughest part is actually getting involved. And but but I feel like, luckily for us, right in a training program or yeah. or if you're in a medical school and you're on rotations mm -hmm. or, you know, luck luckily the research is all around you at all all times. Yeah. It's just trying to find that how to you know trying to find the outlet. So when you say when you say research is all around you, are you talking about case reports, studies, review articles? Which one is more accessible to most people? Yeah. So so I I think uh, what's most accessible to to everyone on from a medical student, resident, or even fellow level are case reports. Okay. All and, right. and and case reports are a good way to get your feet wet. Uh, uh, if you've read a note or or some if you've read a H and P or a note, that's essentially the basis of. Uh, of a case yeah. of a case report and and you know um you have a good history a good physical some diagnostic workup mm. uh, a little bit of discussion which is in your plan and assessment and if you turn that into paragraph form you, you have a case report case reports of 1500 words you know okay. if right. you want to write a full case report but but i think for medical students uh and residents mm. uh, a case report is, is probably the first thing they should take a dab at Right. Um, I didn't do it that way, but but I think my experience might be different than than the most most people. Most people yeah. yeah. So, more, the thing you're saying now is more accessible to most people is the case reports, right? Yes. But how you know, even with the, with the fact that case reports may not be as extensive as writing a review article, yeah. for example, when you invest your time into writing a case report, you want to make sure. That is something worthwhile. How do you how do you select cases that you think, or maybe you show it to somebody who's more experienced, who yeah. will be able to say, okay, you know what, I think this is reportable, and you know we should go ahead and yeah. Write so it up. so I mean the first thing is to be aware, be aware. So if you're if you're 
whether, you know, depending on your setting, if you're a student and you're rounding with the team or, or if you're in a resident and you're rounding and, and someone says it's an interesting case, keep it in the back of your mind. There's, there's a reason why it's interesting. It's but, right. but, but as a general rule, if, if you come across a case, I would say there's five or six different reasons why a case report might get published. And, and one of them is obviously if it's a truly a rare case, like a rare disease or a rare pre- uh, case of, or rare presentation, presentation. of a certain disease. Okay. Um, second is if, if a case is a clinical challenge, for example, you had to do a, a million dollar workup to get to something just because it didn't present the way that it normally does. And, okay. and clinical challenge or clinical puzzler, as they call them, they're, they're publishable as well. All right. um, and then if you're, if you're a surgeon or if you're someone who's a proceduralist and <clears throat> you do a procedure or technique that's not the normal way of doing something with a good outcome or a bad outcome, um, that's also publishable because okay. it's a case where, where you did something. Uh, uh, also, side effects or adverse events of procedures or medications. Okay. Um, and and then you have your potpourri sort of things that you can kind of uh, bunch everything else into. Uh, but I but I feel like if most cases, if they're interesting to begin with, can fall into one of those categories. Those categories. Yeah. Say you pick a topic. You you've you've had your uh, run in with case reports and and you want to go to the next step, right? I, w- yeah. I would say a good way to go is review articles. Okay. And and review articles are essentially just a, it's it's kind of, you pick a topic, um, pick any topic that you're in, interested in uh, and try to pull out all the literatures on that topic, okay? Um, you know, you pull out all the journal articles, you could pull out uh, guidelines and and just see what has happened in the last five to seven years. I, I think that good review articles on a topic come out every five to seven years. So, uh, for example, I, I guess if you want to throw an example out there, like, I don't know, let's think of a topic. So, the... Um, Updates and the management of pulmonary hypertension. That's one yeah, of so, area where you have a lot of <laughs> so, so my, Yeah, my, my area is pulmonary hypertension. So, yeah. if, if I want to do an article, for example, on updates and management of pulmonary hypertension. So, you know, normally the guidelines come out every five to seven years, but new medications come out in that time or or other research maybe on pulmonary rehab or uh, health-related quality of life. Uh, so those are all different things that I can go online, pull out the articles and, and see what has happened in the last five years and, and focus on that. But um, review articles are good in the sense that uh, they kind of make you experts on a topic. So research is not only for getting published and uh, yeah. upgrading your CV. It also keeps you abreast of the particular topic. Exactly, yeah. and, and and you're kind of uh, you're kind of on that wave of you're kind of on the wave or the crest of the wave. So you're up to date with with all the information on a certain topic.